Hi everyone and welcome to the fifth episode of Beauty Weekly. This is the show where Kate and I will be bringing you closer to the specimens here at the museum, the research going on here, and anything else that we think is cool. Actually, before we go on, I just have to say that my phone's ringing and I really need to step out, but, but, don't panic, I have a sub. You haven't left me all alone. No, I would never do that. <laughs> so, all right. This is my good friend Derek, who's Hello. gonna fill in for me and uh, take you through the episode, so have fun. All right, well Derek, Hi. welcome. Thank you. So today I'm gonna be telling you all about our specimen that we pulled from the herbarium. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's here. So uh, we've already gone through the blue whale, the cyanobacteria, the porcupine fish, and the rhinoceros beetle from our other four collections here at the museum. And so today uh, we've pulled from the herbarium. So the herbarium is like lichen and fungi. Yeah. And... and then a whole other collection of like pressed plants. Okay. Yeah. So I said last week that we were going to have to find some tamer organisms, but with like <laughs> the deadly porcupine fish and the like fight to the death rhinoceros beetle. Um, but then I completely disregarded that. And so today we are talking about the quintessential toxic plant, which is Atropa belladonna. That sounds really familiar. They, someone uses that in Macbeth. Yeah. Too. Yeah. The, well, the real Macbeth of Scotland used it. Um, he used it during a truce, so a little bit dirty, uh, to poison the invading king of England's troops to the point where they could no longer stand and had to return to the ship. Oh. Yeah. So it's got a long history as a poison. Uh, Poison-tipped arrows that predate the ancient Romans come to mind. Uh, it was also used as a medicine, uh, historically for a local anesthetic for surgery, um, but nowadays it's mostly used in eye surgery to dilate the pupils as prep. Wow. That's like a really good like redemption story. <laughs> I feel like Taylor Swift needs a good redemption story. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> Yeah, from local anesthetic to dilating the pupils. Yeah, nice and tame. Um, yeah, that effect on the eye, the dilating of the pupils, is actually where the name comes from. So Belladonna, which is the species name, it means beautiful lady. It was named like that because Italian women used to use it to dilate their pupils for cosmetic reasons because it was considered attractive. So like, are you into people who have dilated pupils? <laughs> I think that fad may have died out. We can pool our, our viewers. Let us know in the comments if you're, you know, attracted Do to dilated pupils. you find those attractive? <laughs> So the other part of the name, the genus name Atropa, comes from one of the three fates of Greek mythology, Atropos. She was the one who cut the thread of life, so a little bit ominous. Uh, <laughs> and this, uh, the plant is also commonly called deadly nightshade, so all this nomenclature kind of suggesting that maybe you should stay away from this, this plant. It's incredibly toxic. It takes only two berries to kill a human child and about 10 to kill an adult. Um, although some animals like sheep and pigs are just completely immune to the toxin, and we have no idea why, but we're not, so like, sucks to be human, I guess. Does it have any sort of like anesthetic use at all? Like if it was used in a lower dosage, would that work? When it was used historically as an anesthetic, it was in this herbal mixture that also had henbake, mandrake, and hemlock. Uh, so I don't know exactly about the, the different dosages of the plants, but yeah, it was used in anesthetic. Right. And the reason it could be used for an anesthetic is because the chemicals that make it so toxic, they interfere with a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. So if you block the activity of this neurotransmitter, then neurons can't communicate with each other anymore. So as a result of ingesting all these chemicals, your nervous system starts shutting down, which is why you die, but is also why it can be used as an anesthetic, because if you prevent the neurons from communicating with each other, the pain signal doesn't get relayed from your skin to your brain. So there's another chemical present in belladonna called solanine, which is toxic in a different way from what I just talked about. Um, but what's interesting about this one is that it is also found in potatoes. So potatoes and deadly nightshade are in the same family of plants, which is not two species I would have guessed to be closely related. It's kind of like the nice farm girl having like an evil witch twin sister or something. <laughs> so is that why like potatoes have those green spots? Yeah, solanine okay. is in the green spots that you're not supposed to eat. What if I ate one though? Well then, don't do it. That is the end of this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to learn more about Atropa belladonna or the histories and its properties or more about poisonous plants in general, uh, just check out all of our links in the description below. We'll see you next week where we go through our last video in the series. Bye.